Would you like to learn how to laser engrave on glasses with a diode laser? Well today I'm going to show you how to do it. Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I have a few tips for you to make engraving on the glass with a diode laser really pretty easy. So let's get started. Thank you to all of my Patreons. Your contributions make this channel possible. And if you'd like to join the Patreon family, please go to patreon.com slash Papa's Workshop. Today I'm going to try to engrave this wine glass that is tapered at the top, which is a typical wine glass. So I went ahead and set this up in the rotary roller at the angle. I'm using the extension down here to be able to support the glass. But one of the things that I found is that the glass still moved. So I just slipped in a couple pieces of tile to keep it from moving. Hopefully that's not going to restrict the rotation of it. And one of the things that I like to do is be able to square the machine up with the rotary roller itself, not the frame. And that's perfectly straight. That looks really good. Actually, I need to move that just a little bit. looks real good for that square. And the other thing I want to do is check the height. That is perfect. So the Z height is set. Now there's some important points that I want to cover. First, this paint is tempera paint. Just very inexpensive paint that you can put on the glass. So that's the first one. The second one, this stem is being held by this arm. The problem that I had, no matter what I did, it still wanted to slide. That's the reason I have the two pieces of tile there. And the third thing, that paper is in there to help prevent some of that extreme reflecting of the light. And number four, you want this glass for the engraving area to sit level. The circumference is measured at the widest point. The glass is sitting level to the area that is going to be engraved, and that's key. This arm also is critical, but the problem is with it sliding, no matter what you do, you have to have something that is steady enough to be able to support it, but yet allow that glass to turn. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the file. Hit File, Recent Projects, and this is it right here. And we'll just blow it up. There we go. So that's the logo that I'm going to engrave on the glass. And I just created this in Lightburn itself. Now I went ahead and selected the fire button. So I can see right where it is. And I'm going to put just a little tiny pencil mark there. So I can still see the little pencil mark right there. All right. Then we'll frame this next. Now because I had so much trouble with this glass sliding, I wanted to frame this using that reference point to make sure that my ceramic tile that was going to hold it in place and prevent that glass from sliding. And it worked perfectly. Now you can use a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be ceramic tile, but it has to be something that is slippery enough to allow it to turn, but strong enough to keep it from sliding. The settings that I'm going to use is 20 inches per minute with 40% power. And I found that that has worked really well on the glass. Now it's time to grab the glasses and let's start the engrave. Now if you've watched some of my other videos where we were engraving the glass, you notice that the blue light was just shining everywhere. Well the paper is there to help prevent that because as the laser shines through the glass into the glass, that paper will prevent it from reflecting in all different directions. So that actually had become a very important component you don't see as much blue light being reflected throughout the whole entire room. And to me, 
that's real important. Now, as far as the tempera paint, I choose to brush it on. I use a foam brush. I have had a number of people suggest that I roll it on, and I have not been successful with the roller because it's taken multiple coats to get good coverage. But with the brush, one coat, and at most two, and it's worked extremely well. Now, as far the, as the logo, this is the logo of a local restaurant in the area, and when they gave me the um, original artwork, it was very, very poor quality. And as a result, I just had to recreate that logo in Lightburn. This software is actually easy to use and has a tremendous amount of capabilities. So recreating this uh, logo in the Lightburn software was not a difficult task at all to be able to accomplish. And looking at this logo as it is finished, looks absolutely amazing. It has a lot of detail in it. Now, let's go ahead and take it over to the sink. Let's get it cleaned up. And all it takes is just water to be able to wash this off and show that final result. And by the way, this is some beautiful crystal. Listen to this. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. That is just so much fun to be able to do. But as far as the cleanup, washing off this tempera paint is so easy. You don't need any um, hard coarse brushes or scratch pads. Just a little bit of water and slight rubbing and that's all you need. It comes right off. And that's another thing that I really like about using the tempera paint. And now to be able to see the final result, it is just gorgeous. I love the detail that's in it. It came out very, very nice. And I've got a couple of bonus features that I want to be able to show you right now before we leave. Now once you have the logo, all you need to be able to do is resize it, change the speed and the power setting, and you can create coasters. Now I'm using cork for this one with the same exact logo. And then, once again, all I need to do is just change the setting. And using the Norton white tile method, I'm able to create this logo. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go into more detail on exactly how I created the logo and the different settings that I used to be able to engrave these. Now, after the cleanup, this looks absolutely gorgeous. And on the cork, I do wash this and brush it lightly with water. And that removes any of the residue from the ash from the engraving. Thank you for watching the day. I hope that you learned a few things and gained some tips that you can apply into your shop and be successful at engraving on glass. It's actually a lot of fun and it's not that hard to do. Think outside the box. Try some things, and I think that you'll be successful. If you like the video today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And by the way, while you're there, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell notification next to it. That way you'll be notified on the next videos that I upload. Thank you for watching today. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video that I'm doing, whatever that may be. I've got a lot of exciting videos planned and you're not going to want to miss out. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, there you go. Three projects. One coaster of cork, one coaster with a ceramic tile, and the wine glass ready to kick back and have a nice, lovely evening. Again, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon.